Every picture tells a story. Um, I think every dish has a little history attached to it. And um, every recipe should be taken and owned. Now, I've owned this recipe, um, as did the people of Cape Town, um, who were initially Indonesian slaves and Malaysian slaves. And they used to make babuerti, which has its own little name. And I know a lot of people actually can't even say babuerti. Can you say babuerti? I'm going to teach you what my daddy taught me. He said, if you want to remember something, sing it. So I want you to say, ba 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 booty, ba 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 booty, la 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 la. <laughs> While you're tempering your spices, okay? So let's do this again. Ba 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 booty. It's a very lovely name. Ba 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 booty. Okay, so that's how you're going to say it. And this is how we're going to make it. We're going to use these beautiful spices. And you will find in every kitchen, um, every Cape Malay kitchen, every Indian kitchen for that matter, every housewife has her own masala. And you will see that a recipe often calls for masala besides the other spices. And that's her mix, okay? But as long as we have the fundamental things in here, thank goodness actually for Indonesia because they brought beautiful spices to the Cape. And we took a very, I say we, because I'm Cape Tonian. <laughs> we took a very bland dish. Um, and normally it was like the leftovers that were left for the slaves in the kitchen. Maybe a bit of lamb or a bit of mince. And they then took all these beautiful spices and gave life to the dish, which we're going to do today. So we're going to first stop with a uh, start, actually, not stop. We're not stopping yet. There's no stopping this girl. We're going to start with our um, onions because that's the most important part of your dish. And then while the onions are in the pan, we're going to add our spices and we're going to I'm giving you my mix, okay? So this is the Jenny. I call this my babuerti. And this is my, um, uh, what, what, what's the word I'm looking for? This is my take on babuerti. It's got all the deliciousness in it. It's got the lovely sultanas, or you can use raisins. Whatever's in your kitchen, as long as it's lovely dried fruit. Often we use apricots. Apricots are nice and tangy and they've got a little bit of acidity. So just take it and own it with what you can find. And babuerti actually is not a very hot dish. Well, in my kitchen, that's another story because this girl, she like it hot. And so you try it, okay? Add a little bit of heat to yours. So we always start off with some oil. And we're going to just pop the oil into our pan. Here we go. It might look like this is a lot of oil. It's not because my meat is very, very lean. And into here, I'm going to take a little scroll of cassia because I also like to just cook this in um, with my onions and it's nice to I play a game with my ba -ba -ba -buerti because the person who finds that um, either gets a little kiss or a gift or something you know it's like the Christmas pudding when you hide the coin in there well Jenny hides the stick okay so now we've got this going and once again oh, look at that the smoke is coming off and I always wish that you were in my kitchen to smell this but you're gonna have the pleasure of smelling your own kitchen soon Okay, as we add the different elements to our babuerti, I'll talk you through the dishes, okay? I'm going to put just a couple of little curry leaves into there. Listen to them spatter, they're gorgeous. And we'll add some at the end because we want that beautiful intensity of the curry leaf. Look at that. I've already mixed um, with my onions, my ginger and garlic. Can you smell that? Doesn't that smell absolutely exquisite? I'm going to put just one fresh bay leaf. If you can't get fresh bay leaves, guys, use dry ones, laurel, okay? We're gonna just pop one of those in there. And then I'm going to just put these two sweet elements aside. We've got some lovely fresh coriander to chop in at the end. We've got some beautiful almonds, have a look at that. But we'll talk about those just now when we do the decoration. All right, so. I don't want to keep adding all the time, um, adding oil or fat to this. So I'm going to only give one last little sp uh, sp uh, spritz or a little drizzle of oil to this because I want my spices to start catching and release even more flavor. And then we'll do what we call sipping. Just make sure you've got a bottle of water next to the stove or a glass of water because you can add little, little bits. And I call it steam frying because it just brings the oil back up. But when we reach that point, I'll talk about it more. Okay. This is starting to smell incredible. Cooking is about layering. It is about aromas and perfumes and smells. So 
if we had to just throw everything into this pot at the same time, it's just going to be like a little mishmash. I don't like mishmash. I like layers of flavor, okay? So here we go. At the minute your um, onions start to become translucent, that means that you can almost start to see through them. They lose that sort of dense look, that solid look. We can start adding our spices. But before you add your spices, we're going to add a little bit of oil and we're going to get a cup of water and keep it next to the stove, okay? So let me get the water first. Okay, so we have some um, nice clean water next to our stove. We're going to give another splash. This looks like a lot coming out of this bottle, but it isn't. That's why I like this lid, I can control it. Okay. You can hear it, you can smell it, and if you actually look in this pan, the color has changed. Now we're going to build our babuti. I'm going to start off with some cumin, also known as jira, um, and you can use it, do what the recipe says, okay? Um, and just add what the recipe says. If you like something a little bit more than the other and you want that flavor to dominate, add a bit, but just remember to keep a nice balance. And we're going to use, this is a masala. This one is called mother-in-law's masala. That's lovely, it's like mother-in-law's tongue. We are vicious. This is not so vicious though. Um, and over here we have some, this is our lovely fennel. Put the fennel in. Oh, these smells are just too glorious for words. And then I'm going to put a bit of it. Now, cardamom, oh, she's the queen of spices, darling. And I do temper them, and I actually grind it with the pod on because the pod has got lots of flavor, and then I just push it through a sieve, okay? And it's a very, very, very expensive um, spice. I'm not going to use too much. You can always taste and continue as you go. Now, what is missing? Just, oh. Can you smell those spices? No, you can't, but you can imagine what they're gonna smell like. Look at that. Now, the one thing about Babuti is this wonderful, wonderful golden color that comes from turmeric. And we spoke about the wonderful attributes of turmeric. Healthy, healthy. Um, you know what I do with turmeric? I actually make a little mixture and I put salt and pepper and I put turmeric and gelatine in a, sh a shaker and I keep it on my, on my table and I shake it onto my food. What does the gelatine do? It's good for my nails and good for my hair and I can prove it. It's stunning, but you wouldn't be taking like a whole big spoon of gelatine, would you? But when you do it like that, you don't even know it's happening. Now, if you have a look into my pan, you're going to see this is starting to dry out. We don't want them to burn. So a little bit of water, not too much. Look at that, it's starting to release. Look at that, look at that. And it brings, it just releases the oil back. Um, into the pan. I don't want to make soup because if I'm going to add too much liquid, it's, that frying process is, is going to stop. Okay, look at that. And then I'm going to add my ground beef. I'm going to add my minced meat. You don't have to brown your meat. You can if you want to. I mean, then bring this together, but it is not necessary. Look at that. And I want to just literally cook out the spices just a little bit. The minute that those aromas hit you, then it's time to add your meat. If you're going to add the meat too soon, you're going to stop this process. Jenny said so. Trust me, it works. Okay. So look, that's the last little bit. And just let it simmer for a couple of minutes. You can actually see, look, it's bubbling away beautifully here. Look at that. And... Oh, I love those aromas. And I'm going to give you just a little bit more curry leaf. I love curry leaves. Also, they're an amazing herb. There you go. Right, while that's happening, I'm just going to get my little emergency, a little bit more water. You never know if you need it. So let's get that ready. And then in with the mince. Tiny, tiny droplet. If you look at the surface of your pan, you will see little bubbles starting to form at the top. It's like little bubbles, it's like nice and volcanic. You can actually see the oil is starting to separate. Have a look, see? And just remember your water's here, that's your rescue remedy, so that you don't burn anything. You just keep adding little, little, little bits like that. Look at that. Now the oil is starting to separate um, from your spices, you can start adding your beef. If you're not into red meat, 
No one says you can't make a babushi with ground turkey or ground chicken or lamb. You can even do it with lentils. So even if you're a vegetarian, you can make a lovely lentil ba 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 booty. <laughs> Here we go. And we need to just keep breaking it up, okay? While we, while we cook it out. We're gonna just keep breaking it up. Look at that. And just push it down into your spice mix. And once again, just have that water handy, my loves, so that you don't burn. Look at that, just keep breaking it up. Now, um, in the original recipes, they do use um, soaked bread to bulk it because they call it actually um, like a meatloaf. But I, I, I don't like the bread in it. I um, have someone in the family who's gluten intolerant, so we don't, we don't use the bread. And because it's not a very wet mix, um, it sets beautifully in the oven. I did a bit of research into babuti and I thought, I wonder, where does it actually come from? Well, Indonesia, um, they have their own version and they also make one with like coconut, but also the Romans, can you believe it? Early in history, dating right back to the Roman Empire, the Romans used to make this, they used to make meatloaf and they use completely different spices. They used to put oregano in it. I have to be honest, I'm sorry about the Roman Empire, but I have no desire to make my babuti with oregano. Sorry. Mm -mm. Look at that. You can see all these beautiful spices are cooking in nicely. I'm going to literally add a splash of water and then I'm going to just let it gently cook out. Now, once this is ready, we pop it into a dish and um, it will then go and bake into the oven. So don't worry if there are a few little red bits knocking about because the meat will definitely continue to cook um, in your oven. Look at that. Now we were talking about the sweet and sour elements of babueti. Um, all these beautiful fruits. Look at this gorgeous golden sultanas. I'm going to pop those in now. You can use raisins if you want to. You could use prunes. You can use any dried fruit actually at your, at your disposal. And because I'm not going to add apricots, I have chosen to use a delicious apricot chutney and some apricot jam. Now that gives a beautiful level of sweetness to the dish. Some people even put a little splash of vinegar. I'm not going to worry with the vinegar because I've got the lovely acidity that's going to come from the sambal later. So in I go with my lovely apricot jam and just stir it around and make sure it's beautifully mixed like so. I haven't put the salt and pepper in yet, as you would have noticed. I always just find when I'm sort of working with um, ground beef, I like to add the salt at the end so that the, it doesn't draw all the water out and you don't get clumps, okay? So here's our beautiful chutney. You can use any chutney, actually. You could use mango chutney, whatever's on your supermarket shelf, as long as you've got that lovely sweet and tangy uh, flavor that's happening. Just look at this rich color. Doesn't that look stunning? This is really looking beautiful. I'm very excited, can't wait. Um, what else would I like to add to my babuati? Nothing that shouldn't be there. This is looking lovely. You could add a few more sultanas if you really like it. You know what I love is when the sultanas pop. Um, they suck up all the beautiful juice and they, they just pop. It's like eating a, a rehydrated grape. They're beautiful. Look at that. It's looking lovely. And now I'm going to just season it with salt and pepper. Some salt and some pepper because the salt obviously is going to give you that beautiful savouriness and it kind of balances out with the sweetness that's in there. So some salt. Mm -hmm. I'm just making sure that salt because there's such fine salt it could have been caster sugar. <laughs> and some pepper. This is some ground white pepper. You're very, very, very welcome to use any type of pepper that you like um, and just give it a good stir and this is ready for the dish. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? I'm going to chop a bit of um, fresh coriander into it before we put it into the dish to bake it. So let's take this across and give this a nice little cut. 
We're going to just chop this nice and rough and leave the stems on, okay? Because for me, all the flavor is not only just in the leaves, it's in the stems. So the longer the stem for me, the more flavor is gonna go into my dish. And if you were doing like a Thai dish, make sure those roots are there because that's really flavor. Okay, I'm switching it off and it's ready to be prepared for the oven. Okay, so all these beautiful spices have been absorbed into the meat and all it's saying to me now is, darling, I want to jump into the oven. So let's take our beautiful babooti mix. Remember, ba 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 Are you saying it? Are you singing it? <laughs> and we're gonna go straight into our bowl like this. At this point, um, I'm sure you've already tasted um, and you're checking your seasoning. And if you would like a little bit sweeter, you can add more sultanas, some more jam, some more chutney but this is the last chance you get, okay? So always, I always say, taste your food before you start to do whatever you do with it because once the sauces go on, once it goes in the oven, it's a little bit too late. So I'm thinking, because I have this kind of sweet, savory tooth, I might just, because I can, take a few little sultanas and just fling them over the top because I love to encounter them. Okay, so now we have everything we've got to remember this what i said about the little cinnamon stick you don't have to do it but it makes great fun if you're having a dinner party um, and just tuck it in nicely make sure that all the corners are beautifully look at that that they are beautifully covered because you want a nice even slice when you cut into it and now what i'm going to do is put a layer of custard it's just eggs which i've seasoned remember you want layers of flavor so it's got a little bit of salt a bit of pepper um, in the egg and i've beaten it up with some milk now some people like to make it really really decadent and they have half and half and half you know half milk half cream um, but we're not doing that so just do that with your custard make sure your eggs are beaten make sure that all the white has been absorbed into the yellow why do i say that because when this bakes you don't want it to look um oh, like a scramble you know we've got egg white here and a bit of yellow that you want to have this lovely golden color so now what i'm going to do is take some fresh bay leaves if you have a lemon tree in your garden and you don't have bay leaves well use lemon leaves use the nice young ones they're also very delicious um, and some babooties even have lemon rind in it so what happens is it scents it scents the babooti with a lovely lovely citrus oil you can either do this and just lay the leaves all over the top often what i do if i get like a really nice big bay leaf i just take it and i take the bottom off like that and you just break its spine like this and you can actually make scrolls so you can turn and then what you do is you take it like that and you just poke it in all over the surface okay but i would like mine to lay flat today see but you can take it and own it and now i'm going to take some almonds as they do um, often there are almonds but make sure that you know whoever's coming for dinner is not allergic to nuts but there's your custard just make sure that you cover all over. And what's gorgeous is this custard just, it just pops up around the babooti um, and the little bits of meat um, just peep through. And then do the nuts. Don't do too many, although, you know what, I would cover this in nuts because I'm a nut freak as well. But you also want to see your custard and you want to see your bay leaves. So here we go. And this is just so ready for the oven so I'm going to pop that into the oven and we're going to bake it for about 30 minutes um, only because of the egg it's like a quiche you know it takes about 25 to 30 minutes when you do a check on it and take it out of the oven you want it to just have a little bit of a wobble okay because there's enough steam in it to completely cook it through if you're going to cook it so it's absolutely solid what happens is it's like a hell's angel wearing a leather jacket you don't want that darling you want the wobble okay just that nice little gentle wobble so let's go into the oven and we've got our oven on 180 and we're going to pop it onto the middle shelf okay and just let it go while that cooks i'm going to clean down and we'll get the beautiful rice and samples ready for you to try 
This kitchen is smelling heavenly. In fact, it's actually perfumes actually have a lot of spices at the base. You know, so you get all the different notes um, in your in perfumes. And I want to tell you something. There is this is not Izzy Miyaki. This is Izzy Me Cape Town. It is absolutely gorgeous. I just want to bite into it, but it's not ready. So I have been busying myself making little um, side things on the side to go with my babuerti. Now you can do anything you want um, to go with your babuerti, but traditionally um, for me, I like to have a sambal. Um, and in this sambal I've got, remember we spoke about the onions. We could have different onions for different things. I have got red onions in here. I've got white onions and I've got some spring onion. And what I did was to really, really emphasize the flavor and get that lovely onionous onioness is that a word well it is today you've learned a new word it's called onioness um, <laughs> and to get that lovely onion flavor um, into my tomatoes and i am going to use some spring onion with that as well now you could use vinegar or lemon juice i like vinegar because it kind of pickles it a bit just choose a vinegar that is soft and rounded like a lady. Don't use anything that is harsh. Use a nice natural vinegar, okay? Not acetic acid or anything that is gonna make you, or make your mouth's gonna hate you actually, so don't do it. So here we have it. I have sweated the onions. I get that glorious um, onion syrup out of it. And I'm going to add some beautiful fresh coriander to this. Make sure it's got stems and don't, you know, when I cut my herbs, just have a look here. I'm just slicing through the herb. I can't stand it when people do this and they squish out all that delicious herby juice. And you might as well just rub the food on the board and throw the leaves away because they're dead. We don't want dead leaves, darlings. We want beautiful, fresh, okay? There's some lovely, fresh um, coriander to go into that and you can just mix it in nicely and do the coriander at the end. You can make your sambal up front and stand it in the fridge. You can do that like three hours up front if you wanted to, to save some time, um, but only add the lovely fresh coriander at the end. The thing about coriander, it's a lovely soft, it's a soft herb. So soft herbs don't like to be cooked for too long. And if they're going into a salad or a sambal, they want to go in at the last minute. Okay, so it just keeps that beautiful fresh fragrance. All right. So there we have it. That's our little sample. You can serve some extra chutney on the side. I'm not going to, um, I'll, I'll have chutney in the background uh, because I already have chutney um, inside um, my babuerti. Babuerti, remember? And, um, but some people have very, very sweet tooth. So if you would like to, you can add a nice bowl of chutney to the table as well. Um, these are papadoms, which are gorgeous. Sometimes, you know what I do? is I make the papadom and um, I serve a bit of babuerti in the center of the papadom. So I take the, the papadom as it's soft, I stick it into a 12 hole muffin tin, you know the muffin tin that you make muffins, while it's still soft straight from the fire and put it in, then it shapes it. You get this lovely tulip shape and then you can serve little babuertis um, in there, which is nice. Or you could just have this on the side. Now, you do need something to mop everything up. So I've made some yellow rice um, known as funeral rice. Apparently, this rice was served at funerals. It's very, very special. And um, I've always been taught that when you are doing babuerti, you should have lovely, fragrant rice with it. So this is a nice long grain rice, which I've colored with turmeric. And um, I put some cardamom pops um, into the water while it cooks and you can see the little cinnamon stick and you can put a few little um, allspice, allspice, these are the allspice, the little balls, or just and even star anise. Star anise is lovely um, and it garnishes. Look at that, it's just like a beautiful little star. Otherwise, just a bit of cinnamon, but I recommend the cardamom pops. Oh, it just makes all the difference. Okay, and then um, sultanas, which I put in close to the end. Um, or raisins, we have this lovely little dark, things happening in it and you, once again you get this beautiful pop of fruitiness of savoriness and I just garnish with a bit of spring onion top and you have a match made in heaven you have a meal made in heaven it'll take you to heaven but not literally you'll thank you in heaven when you've had our ba -ba 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 tea from South Africa in Cape Town It's that time now, Baburti is going to come out of the oven and I know it's got just a little wibble wobble it's oh yes this is looking amazing look at that baby it 
it's absolutely gorgeous. The nuts are caramelized. Um, there's still a little bit of movement um, in the custard, which will, the steam from that lovely hot dish is just gonna finish it off. And all we need to talking about finishing off is to make you a lovely marble pudding. And that's how we're gonna end our evening, our day. <laughs>